Hello YouTube, it's Matt again, and I want to thank you all for watching my videos, and tonight we're going to talk mixers. And in the process, we're going to make something called Chantilly Cream, which is whipped cream flavored with powdered sugar and vanilla. So let's get started. I have a 5-quart KitchenAid, and I got a 6-quart KitchenAid, and these are what are called planetary mixers. A planetary mixer is a mixer that not only the paddle spins, but the paddle goes up into a mechanism, and that mechanism spins as well, sort of like the scrambler at the county fair where you're spinning and then the entire ride is spinning and it, it worked what it, what, it, what, it, what it counts to is much better incorporation and coverage inside the bowl whereas grandma's mixer the paddle would spin and the bowl might spin on the little wheel tray and you can move the the wheel back and forth and the paddle would go out towards the edge of the bowl or stay in the center of the bowl and that was those were the deluxe models actually but anyways and of course there's the hand mixer which you just well, you can put it anywhere in the bowl. Um, but anyways, these are planetary mixers and they're meant to get good coverage inside your bowl. And the reason this is called the five quart mixer and this is the six quart mixer is it's referring to the size of the, what's called the work bowl, the work bowl. This is a five quart bowl, whereas this is a six quart bowl. And as, as you can notice, the five quart mixer has a smaller motor than the six quart mixer. Alrighty, so let's start off with your mixer. First thing you want to do when you approach a mixer is you want to make sure it is unplugged, all right? Because you never know what type of condition the mixer was left in by the previous user. So first thing you do is you make sure your mixer is unplugged before you do anything. And this one is unplugged. Here we go. Next thing you want to do about these mixers is you want to check the power setting on them. And on both the five quart KitchenAid and the six quart, the power setting is over here on the left hand side. All the way back is off. All the way forward is get her done, all right? So you wanna make sure this is all the way off. All the way off, all the way off, all right? Next thing is you wanna make sure your work, your work bowl is ready to be used. And this one's just called a lift stand mixer where there's a handle on the right-hand side which raises and lowers the bowl, all right? This has its advantages and this has its disadvantages, all right? Okay, so the way this thing works is that you lift your bowl out and there are two little holes on each side of the bowl. There you go. And a little nubby on the back, right here. And what you do is you take this, and you put it over the two little spikes that come out of the arms. And there you go. See, this is loose. You don't want this to happen. What you want to do is take both your hands, put them over both sides of the bowl, and push down until they click. All right, now the bowl is attached to the mixer, and you're ready to go. The last thing you need to do is attach your paddle, go and go ahead and lift your bowl lift arm now once again the bowl lift arm you want to make sure you pull it all the way up until it's locked in upright position because if you don't it'll fall back down and we'll, of course it won't stay there but you get the idea you want you want to make sure it's up and locked okay all right now you're ready to go so then you're ready to plug in the mixer so just plug it in and you go get her going so we'll you know, we'll go and do that for you all right this one goes up there we go and there's, there's low, and there's really, really, really fast. All right, there you go. And when you're done with your mixer, you always unplug it. There you go. That keeps everything safe, and everyone will have a happy day. All right, so that's the six-quart mixer. That's the big one. And, you know, I use this one. It works well for just about anything. Cookies, cake. Uh, this one actually does bread pretty well. Uh, what we have here is the little five-quart mixer. Now, this one has its advantages too. On uh, Now, it's not a bowl lift mixer, so the bowl doesn't go up and down. The way you get to the bowl is you have a little knob on the right-hand side, and back is unlock and forward is lock. So when you pull it back, you can lift the head back. And this is convenient for not only getting the bowl out, but it's also convenient for adding ingredients and in without having to go, you know, in sideways on the six-quart mixer, all right? But <laughs> the disadvantage of this thing is that you got... <laughs> Sometimes you forget to lock the bowl, the, the head down, when you get going and you're busy working, so now and then the head will bop back and forth, and that's a bad thing. So always make sure when you're getting ready to use the mixer to pull that little lever all the way forward, and then the head is locked in its functioning position, all right? All right, now once again, the power switch is over here. There you go. And let me show you how the bowl attaches. There's a whisk in here. And uh, this is, you know, this one has a handle on it, but you notice there's no two holes. 
And uh, this bowl just sits down here in this little circle here, and you twist it clockwise until it tightens into place. And there you go. All right, now you're good to go. And of course, the uh, we're going to use the whisk attachment today. Just put that on like this, and there you go. You're all set. Make sure you pull that forward. Always pull that forward. Oh, everyone forgets to pull that forward. <laughs> all right. So, one last thing about these mixers before we get started. Now, on um, these little thumb screws that hold that uh, hold in your accessories, like your pasta maker, your ice cream machine, your uh, meat grinder, um, these things come loose from time to time. So, you always want to make sure you tighten these puppies up before you start using your mixer, because I've had these fall off into the bowl while the mixer is running, which can be quite interesting. Yeah, no one's got injured, but it makes a lot of noise and it scares whoever's using it. Now, in the case of the big old six quart one, you can take this thing right on off and put it in the drawer because you got this little, you got this little flap here protecting the uh, the action area from people's fingers and other things. So you can just take this off and stick it someplace. Whereas this one, if you take this thing off, then the entire little cover comes off, and that's probably not a good idea. So you might want to just make just tighten this up on your on your little five quart mixer. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to make for you today is what's called Chantilly Cream. And that's made by whipping cream with a high fat content into a fluffy, fluffy little dessert type product which can be used on fruits, on cakes, and cupcakes, or you can just eat it by yourself all alone. Well, never mind. Um, but typically what you're doing is you're taking a high fat content product like whipping cream and you're aerating it using the whisk attachment. And you're, so you're separating the fat globules and you're incorporating air and it's going to be a very voluminous and it gets all puffy and it's nice and silky smooth and creamy, all right? Now that's accomplished by using heavy whipping cream, which is 36 to 40% milk fat, all right? So let's go over milk fat for a moment, all right? We have butter, that's 80% fat. And the other 16% is water and 4% milk solids and lactose and other stuff, okay? And then we, of course, we have heavy cream, which is 36 to 40%. We have whipping cream, which we don't have here, which is 30 to 36%. We do have half and half, which is 10 to 15% fat, all right? Next would be vitamin D whole milk. Vitamin D is added. It doesn't come with the milk. And that is typically 3.25% fat all right and then on down the scale we have two percent and one percent this is two percent and we have what's called skim milk which is 0.5 percent now skim milk has an interesting origin according to mr harold mcgee on food and cooking harold mcgee everyone if you're interested in food science go buy this book it's very good harold mcgee on food and cooking all right According to, Harold, according to Harold McGee, skim milk gets its name because cream rises to the top and is removed off of the product, and the remaining product is skim milk. Yeah, there you go. Check that out. All right, so yeah, dropping some serious knowledge today. Um, all right, so we're going to use heavy whipping cream, 36 to 40 percent milk fat. We're not going to use butter. All right. <laughs> So we go ahead and open up. We're going to start with um, half a pint or eight ounces of heavy whipping cream. We're just going to pour that into our work bowl. There we go, the entire container. All right. And we're not going to add our flavorings yet. What we want to do is we want to build them some volume so our flavorings have something to stick to rather than the side of the bowl. We want them to incorporate into the, the voluminous material instead of just splattering all around and getting stuck and we have to scrape it down. So. I'm going to go ahead and beat this for a few minutes, and I'll be back. And once again, before I do anything, I'll have to plug in my mixer. Because like a good boy, it was unplugged. All right. So let's get started. Make sure I lock my bowl. All right. I think we're at a point where, yep, we sure are. We are at a point where I'm going to add my flavorings now. As you can see, it sort of drips down. It has some volume now, so it will hold my flavorings. So what I'm going to add into the work bowl is one ounce of powdered sugar, which I measured by weight. All right. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. There you go. All right. 
And I measured my powdered sugar by weight using a scale which I picked up at Bed Bath & Beyond. They're about $40. This is an OXO one. It does metric and English and it even has a little light and it makes sure it has a removable top. The removable top makes it easy for cleaning when you waste up on it. But I usually put something over it and then I weigh my product on it. All right. So I've added my flavorings, my vanilla and my powdered sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and continue beating my whipped cream until I get what's called Chantilly cream. Mm. Alrighty, I think we're there. Alright, so here we go. Ooh, that looks looking pretty good. Mm. Go ahead and get a test strawberry. Alright, you dip that puppy in there, and this is what you want it to look like. Ooh, nice and silky and smooth. And this will this will work well. It'll be you can use this to incorporate it into other products like pastry cream, or use it to top it like I said, uh, cakes and cupcakes and fruit and and so forth. And this is good. All right. So this is what you want your your uh, chantilly cream to look like. But this wouldn't be fun if we didn't just leave this alone because you know on you know I can't eat all this cream by myself. So I'm going to show you guys tonight what happens when you destroy chantilly cream. So all you culinary students. Get ready to watch this so when you see this you'll know what not to do all right so i'm going to go ahead and reattach my whip here there we go and we're going to beat this some more all right so here we go oh my oh my oh my all right well i knocked my mixer head and uh ooh, ooh, yikes um this is what happens when you beat chantilly cream too much um you get something that looks like uh looks like this Okay, so um, all you culinary students and, and folks, you don't want anything that looks like this, okay? Because um, this isn't going to work on the strawberry test. All right, so, ooh, take a little bit of strawberry, stick that in. Oop, well, take a little strawberry, put it in there. Ooh, does that look yummy? Mm, no, not, not at all. All right, so that's what happens when you overbeat your Chantilly cream. And uh, there's, there's no way you can fix this. Uh, actually, there is a way you can fix this. You can take this and throw it down the garbage and then start over again, all right? So that's how you fix that problem. But uh, not to worry, it doesn't take very long to make more cream, all right? Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed me going over my five quart mixer and my six quart mixer, and also making and destroying Chantilly cream. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.